themselves with Jerusalem, God says they shall be cut in pieces. Now, I'm going to tell you the meaning behind that. Because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Yes, so America has burdened themselves with having keeping us hostage here. But that's who we are. They're going to be cut in pieces. They took our land, the, our land of Jerusalem. The Bible said, you burden yourself with that, and you shall be cut in pieces. Think of all the times when they passed you over for the job. Think of all the times when you was done dirty by our enemies, man. That's the anger you are to chance. But think of your fathers if you never been to. Alright? Think when they was whipping our fathers, man. Cutting our women's stomach open. Big white men beating little black women upside their head. Think of that. Some brothers, kids have died. Wife has left them. Uh, many things have happened to us, man. But in the kingdom of heaven, man, all that stuff is gonna go away. We gotta keep our mind on it. Keep the soldiers in mind that the mission. The mission is getting the kingdom of heaven. Ruling over these devils that are us. That's the mission. That's the goal. I just wanted to ask a quick question. I'm sitting on the side listening. I said, you've been out here for a minute, right? You've learned some things, right, that you never heard before. So if you didn't know your nationality before you came up here, you know it now, though, right? Um, so a question that I, because I know, I understand, I was in the Christian church for a number of years myself, and we didn't understand a lot of things. We used words that you see in the Bible, but then if you ask them if they understand it, then they may not be able to tell you the understanding of those words. So like an example, like the officer was just reading, and don't go far because I'm just asking a question. Oh, there you go. So, do you know what sin is? What it, so you know, okay. You know what sin is, sis? You know what sin is. Somebody tell me exactly what sin is. Anything you're doing against the laws and commandments? Uh, what would you say? I think it's a, uh, it's a spirit. It's a, uh... Now, both of y'all say y'all know. <laughs> I know. But well, y'all I mean, just gave two different answers. Well, I, I'm not well, saying, I'm just, re, I'm just showing you. <laughs> but you see the example I'm making, I'm showing that. Yeah. I'm just making an example to show that that's one of those words that we use a lot. And maybe everybody doesn't understand what that word is, what it means. You know, it's, just, it's a def definition to that word. So now, you get your answer, you get your answer. What's your answer? Okay, so then see, you used another word. So then that would make me ask you, what is repentance? But, but sin. So sin is something that you have to repent from, but what is sin? Sin is the action of things against the temple. Okay. That's you sinning if you if you cover thy neighbor, if you steal, if you kill, you know? Okay, I I haven't responded to anybody's <laughs> answer as of yet. So but we're gonna read the actual definition because the Bible God defines this word. So you put a word in the Bible and then he'll give you the definition of that word, so we don't have to guess what it is. So read the definition of sin. Read it out of first John chapter three, verse four. Read it out! First John, New Testament, chapter 3, verse 4, is the definition of what sin is. Whosoever commits a sin transgresses also the law. Transgresses means to go against or to break. So read it one more time. Whosoever commits a sin transgresses also the law. So a person that's committing sin is transgressing or breaking the law. That's right. For sin is sin what is sin what is sin is the transgression of the law. That's what it is. So you was the closest because you you but you put a, a, a an addendum in there. You you said that breaking the ten commandments. The Bible is nothing but commandments from the back and history mixed in. So it's far more than ten. But you were so close that that I wouldn't even really I would let that ride. She go to y'all classes too. Oh, you got a class? <laughs> no, I do not. More than oh. one. We've been there more than one. I've only been to your classes twice. Oh, well, you in the I loop? I go to church. Oh, okay, so you in the loop already. You know. Okay, but good that you know though, because yeah. you should know, because this is our book. Real quick, let me get Deuteronomy 7 to 6. Because people think that this is a universal book 
This book is for everybody. That's not in this Bible. This Bible tells you who the book is for. Right. Who God is for. It's all specific. God did never just pick this up and just generalize and this one size fit all. That's not this book. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Bring it out! For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All praise to the Most High. He said that we are his chosen people and we are above, not equal to, not less than, every person upon the face of this earth. Meaning, in every other nationality, we are above them. He created the planet for us. So that's why I want to make sure I clarify because this is our book. I want to clarify and make sure everybody understood what sin was. So as I heard you going into it, you, you mentioned it a few times. I want to make sure that it was clear. I didn't know you was in the loop. You've been in the school. You, you did everything. But, all, but that's our okay. All praises. You should be coming again. You coming today? You coming today? We got room for kids. We got room for kids. We got room for everybody. Come on in. Come learn. Come learn your nationality. So wait a minute. So sis over here. Did you learn what sin was? What is it? To, to not break them. So just like the officer, he was giving you commandments. He gave you a commandment God said about pants, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. He gave you Leviticus chapter 13. He talked about the coloring of our hair. We're not supposed to do that. Like, let's go back real quick. Leviticus 13, and I'm giving this to you. I'm not, and listen, I'm not even <laughs> aiming at nobody. I'm just making sure. This is, this is the thing. When we bring out the laws, it's love. Because this is the thing. So like, here's an example. Y'all standing close to the street. Cars are going by. I can see that way, but you can't. If I see a car that's about to hit, jump this curve and hit you and I move you out the way, nobody would be angry at me if I did that. Because they'll say, wow, you saved my life. When I'm reading these commandments, I'm doing it for the same reason. To save your life. I'm not trying to hurt you when I bring it out. If I bring out something that we guilty in and you find yourself, oh, I'm in transgression of that. That should be another situation, all oh, that, where you say, oh, wow, all oh, praises, you're trying to save my life. That's the mentality we got to have. But our people, we've been raised under this kind of uh, uh, Christianity construct where it's, oh, no man can judge. Because I tell you something to help you, they automatically take it as judging. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm trying to give you something to help you out. So watch this. This is the book of Leviticus. Chapter 13, verse 30. Bring it out. So we read this earlier, but watch this part. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be sight deeper than the skin, and there be a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. So it's unclean, according to the Most High, to have yellow hair in our head. So I just want to get that part. Now watch this. Now you about to hear you heard about the color that's not good to have in our hair, right? Which is, God says it's a plague to have yellow thin hair. So now let's see what healthy, good hair should look like according to the Most High. Bring it out. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 37. But if the scale be in his sight at the stake, and that there is black hair grown up therein, the scale is healed. So wait a minute, you had a skull in your head that was yellow, and it was unclean. He said, but when it go back black, it's clean. So what color should we have our hair? Uh, that's it. Or whatever happens naturally. Like your hair may naturally go gray. Okay, and that's still righteous. But because it was natural, that was of the most high. So if your hair is anything other than black, unnaturally, meaning that it's out of order with the most high. That's, that's right. Off. That's something that we need to fix. We can step back and say, well, you know what? I mean, just like you got brothers and sisters that have tattoos. You got brothers and sisters with tattoos with us, right? But they can say, you know what? I'm not going to get another one. So we always have the opportunity to fix it. You know, as long as we live and breathe, we can fix our sins. So that's what, that's what the sister said. Well, sin is something to repent from. Yeah, it is. Repent means to return. That's return to what? We return into the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons.
IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.